have the head of global research and advocacy of the good governance in tobacco control, which is also the FCTC knowledge hub on the article 5.3 we are talking about. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Dr. Mary Asunta. I request Dr. Mary to speak on tobacco industry interference in Asia. Welcome Dr. Mary, over to you. Thank you very much Dr. Garima and a very big hello uh, to everyone on behalf of the WHO FCTC Convention Secretariat's Knowledge Hub for Article 5.3. Uh, you may be aware that the uh, knowledge hub, the purpose of the knowledge hub is to provide technical assistance uh, to uh, parties as well as to uh, civil society groups and definitely uh, to the various observatories uh, that have been uh, set up. And we do collaborate uh, with other uh, knowledge hubs as well. But our focus will be entirely uh, on implementing uh, FCTC Article 5.3. So today um, I have prepared a short presentation on what the tobacco industry is uh, doing, uh, its interference activities and how to respond uh, to these activities. So um, I'd like to begin by uh, looking at uh, where we are in terms of uh, tobacco industry interference. Um, in the video presentation, uh, I heard the fellows talk about implementing uh, Article 5.3. So I want to stress that it's the governments that implement uh, Article 5.3 and uh, it's the role of civil society to do the monitoring uh, and to prepare reports to uh, assist our governments and definitely to expose the tobacco industry, of course, uh, and then to assist our governments uh, to ensure that they do implement Article 5.3. So um, the uh, GGTC, the Global Center for Good Governance in Tobacco Control based in Bangkok, uh, is the organization that's hosting uh, the Knowledge Hub. Uh, GGTC, in partnership uh, with the uh, STOP uh, project, as you know, we are partners with uh, STOP. Uh, every year, we produce something called a, a very important report, uh, which is actually a report card uh, called the Global Tobacco Industry Interference Index. So what this uh, uh, index does is to look at where and how governments are actually implementing uh, Article 5.3 guidelines. That's the purpose of the index. So it's a report card uh, on our governments. So uh, here on this slide, uh, you will see where governments are. And uh, for those of you who are familiar uh, with this index, and some of you in this webinar are actually involved in the preparation of your country reports, uh, for this index, so you prepare your country index, which feeds into the global uh, index. Uh, and as you would know that this index ranks countries, uh, so a score is uh, applied. The lower the score, the better it is. It shows that the countries are responding very well. There's low level of interference and the countries are doing well. And higher the, the score, the worse the, the performance. So if you look at the left-hand side, Bangladesh, Pakistan, Nepal, Maldives, India, and Sri Lanka. If you look at the, the this is this is the, the, the scoring position of, of where South Asian countries are in respect uh, to a global scoring. So for last year, 50, we, we did the report card for 57 countries. And out of the 57 um, countries, this is the ranking of where the South Asian uh, countries are. And uh, as you can see uh, that, uh, if, if you get a, a, a yellow or a, a light green uh, color applied, it means that uh, you're doing reasonably well. You do not want to be in the hot pink and, and red uh, section. So uh, the, the blues and the greens just means that these countries are somewhere in the middle um, of the ranking. So uh, not doing terribly bad, but neither doing uh, really well. So, you know, being stuck in the middle is, is you know, not, not good enough. So it is our job to ensure that we help countries to actually get into the yellow and, and green region. And I'll talk a little bit more about that. And so here is the ranking. So what I've done in this graph is to put uh, Brunei, uh, which has got the lowest score. So this is the ranking from 20, 2020 uh, Global Tobacco Index. So Brunei, you know, it's got a score of 14, very low. And you've got Japan at the other end of the spectrum with a score of 88. And where are the South Asian countries, you know? So you've got uh, Nepal with a score of 43, 
followed by Sri Lanka, 44, Maldives, 48, Pakistan, 50, India, 61, and Bangladesh, 68. So as you can see, uh, perhaps uh, Nepal, Sri Lanka, Maldives uh, doing all right, you know, with uh, uh, with uh, India, Bangladesh, towards the other end of the spectrum for the South Asian um, countries. So uh, right now I am busy doing the 2021 index and we've got 81 countries participating this year. And uh, later this year, we will be able to let you know uh, where you are in the ranking. So basically uh, there are seven uh, categories in this index, which uh, documents how governments have responded to the interference. So there is a question, uh, a section one, which is all about industry interference in policy development. And this is where you really see how the industry tries to interfere in defeat or undermine tax increase, or you know, uh, uh, undermine amendments to strengthen tobacco control legislation, uh, or even uh, delay implementation of pictorial health warnings. Those kind of um, activities have been uh, recorded. And so I've just given one example of uh, Bangladesh for last year, where the tobacco industry uh, defeated and undermined uh, tax, tax increase. So um, we move on now to really looking at what the industry has been up to and what are its activities and how it has been conducting its interference. So the question here is what have transnational tobacco companies been up to? Basically, the main ones have been rebranding themselves. So some of you would be familiar already. In fact, all of you would be familiar with the Philip Morris International's Unsmoke campaign that it launched internationally and in many, many of our countries, you know, about Unsmoke. Uh, and then it also last year launched the Tobacco Transformation Index. And of course, you know, this is all to show that the industry is uh, being part of the solution. It's not the problem, it's doing something about uh, the, the problem, you know, that smoking is bad, it doesn't want you to quit, but it'll continue selling cigarettes. And then it's developed a new range of uh, products that it now talks about switching. So they are nevertheless harmful products as we all know, but the whole uh, exercise is on rebranding its image to be part of the solution. And uh, so they've got different, uh, what you call it, um, logos and also different uh, tag. Uh, taglines you know for this branding uh, BAT talks about creating a, a, a better tomorrow however last year right through the pandemic you know when uh, our lives changed dramatically big tobacco and that is the transnational tobacco companies were busy promoting uh, their products all throughout the pandemic so they 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 did not stop production in fact when governments took action they actually uh, you know, uh, tried to oppose those actions. But you also had tobacco companies launching new products. Japan Tobacco in Korea, for example, launched Plume Tech. BAT, uh, you know, uh, launched and it promoted its Glow brand in many countries. And it, you know, it, it, it adapted to the pandemic and said you should be partying at home, you know, with its product. So it, it did, at the end of the day, it did not really care whether there was a pandemic, if people were dying. And of course, you know, smokers are more vulnerable uh, to the uh, COVID-19 and that they experience more severe symptoms in the, in the event that they uh, contract COVID-19. However, as far as the industry, tobacco industry is concerned, continue using its product and it promoted its product and it launched new brands. So I, I, I don't want us to think that only the transnationals are a problem. Even local companies in some of our own countries have also been continuing to promote and sell their product. And uh, of course, I think many of you would be familiar in Sri Lanka itself, a high level uh, government official was involved in actually supporting, um, uh, what do you call it, a cinnamon flavored uh, uh, tobacco product, you know, and uh, this hit the news and uh, local uh, advocates uh, and, uh, and uh, groups in Sri Lanka, uh, such as the uh, Sri Lanka Medical Association, ADIC, all, uh, all took action, you know, to really denounce this action. And I know that NATA uh, took action as well. And so congratulations to Sri Lanka for really monitoring and to ensure that, you know, you put the, 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 your, your, your monitoring to, to use and respond in a very timely manner. But the point here is really that throughout the pandemic, tobacco companies, both transnationals as well as local companies were trying to undermine uh, tobacco control legislation or even break them uh, during the, the, the pandemic. 
Uh, and of course, uh, as, we, as you are familiar, uh, tobacco-related CSR activities were stepped up throughout the pandemic and they continue uh, you know, to, to be conducted now. And here is Philip Morris boasting to its um, shareholders during its AGM in May last year about all, you know, how much it has donated 30 million across 62 markets. By the way, tobacco companies call your countries markets. That's the way they refer to countries, not people, not government, but markets, you know. So it's all about market share and all about uh, sales. And of course, in the process, talk about, you know, the, the good that it is doing. Um, I also want to give an example of when governments do the right thing during the pandemic. That is, you know, when there is a lockdown and they have a, a, a ban on sales of uh, non-essential products. And, you know, there were several countries that banned the sale of cigarettes uh, for because they are non-essential products. We know we, we saw South Africa do that. We, we know that we are also in, in India, we know in certain cities in, uh, in the Philippines, for example. Uh, and in Bangladesh, you know, when there was a, a government a decision to stop the production or manufacturing of cigarettes, Japan Tobacco, you know, uh, solicited assistance from the Japanese ambassador in Bangladesh to, to actually apply pressure on the Bangladesh government. And in the letter, you know, that has now been made public, and you will find this letter up on Tobacco Tactics website, you find that the Japanese ambassador wrote to the finance minister saying and highlighting the importance of tobacco investment to Bangladesh. Just look at how the letter was framed, focusing on investment, saying that Japan Tobacco was proudly partnering with the government and the ambassador is telling the Bangladesh government taking care of existing investors is best way to bring in new investments in the country. I mean, there is a subtle warning there, you know, that the ambassador gave. So it is, it's, it's this kind of monitoring that has got to be exposed and challenged. More recently in, um, in May, uh, 20th, 21st of May, uh, as you know, that Nikkei Inc., uh, which is, you know, a, a, a media company in Japan, organizes the Future of Asia Conference. They do this every year, and we've got records from 2010. But this year, Philip Morris International was one of the main sponsors, and uh, together with Japan Foundation. And of course, uh, you know, we alerted the, um, uh, this is a stock partnership, uh, alerted many of uh, our country partners uh, to, you know, to, to, to take action immediately. Uh, and because of the quick, timely manner in which advocates took action, um, it was really very, very effective. Uh, and uh, Philip Morris cancelled their sponsorship. So here you, you, you find that they've cancelled it. So, you know, uh, again, well done to the advocates who took timely action. Um, all of last year, and in, in fact, uh, you know, it continues this year as well, you see lots of new groups, international meetings being organized, reports being released, focusing on harm reduction. And here is an example of KAC, you know, which is, uh, you know, uh, putting out, you know, which is a champion of harm reduction. This is a group KAC that is being uh, sponsored by the Foundation for Smoke Free World, which itself is funded by Philip Morris. Uh, you know, organizing uh, webinars. It produced a report that it launched in Geneva. Uh, and then, you know, again, you know, it, it, it uh, updated that report, you know, and it launches it. And of course, uh, you know, you find new groups that have uh, in, emerged who have become very vocal, applying pressure again on governments. For governments that have banned e-cigarettes and, and heated tobacco products, these groups, you know, apply pressure to revoke the ban. For governments who are in the process of, you know, uh, drawing up legislation, they apply pressure to, to, to uh, urge the, the governments to actually not ban, but they talk about regulation. But of course, it's actually what they mean is to actually use these products as a cessation products. And, and that's really not helpful at all. For the record, you should know that oh, there are about 40 countries and jurisdictions that have actually banned. Um, e-cigarettes and, uh, and HTP. So this is something that we need to, to look out to and to pay attention. Um, and also there are campaigns and reports that have been released uh, on smuggling. Again, you know, smuggling is a very easy to use argument that the, the industry applies on governments to scare governments. And so now 
the tobacco companies are talking about uh, HTPs and e-cigarettes that are being smuggled. You know, because it's a it's a scare tactic. So before it's only cigarette cigarettes being smuggled. So now it's HTPs and you know uh, and e-cigarettes are being smuggled. The whole point is this: not to raise taxes or to ask governments to ease up you know, on regulation of these products. Otherwise, they'll have a big smuggling problem on their hands. So here you find Japan Tobacco, and this is a retail group, you know, again, that is you know, supported by the tobacco industry. Uh, you know, this is a media sponsored uh, article, you know, this is in Malaysia. Again, this is Philip Morris, you know, sponsored. And here's Imperial Tobacco's uh, sponsorship, again, putting out reports on smuggling. I want to make a quick reference to Bhutan. Uh, I know that uh, Bhutan is one of the first few countries, if not the only country that actually banned the sale, manufacture, you know, production and distribution of uh, tobacco products in 2010. And the whole world took notice uh, of Bhutan doing this. And here is an Al Jazeera, uh, what do you call it, a report of uh, August, 29th August, 2020, where Bhutan made a decision to lift the ban uh, you know, uh, as a coronavirus uh, control measure. And the government then allowed smokers to buy products in the state-owned duty-free outlets, you know, in, in limited uh, quantities. So this is, you know, looking at uh, suddenly the issue of whether tobacco is essential or not then becomes really important. The industry tactic is to, to pressure governments to treat tobacco as an essential product, whereas it is not an essential product. It's a harmful product that we, that we all know. And that our job is to encourage and to support our governments in order to strictly regulate them. Uh, and here is the monitoring outcome of uh, SIATCA. As you know, that SIATCA uh, you know, functions around the ASEAN, you know, 10 ASEAN countries, monitoring how uh, the harm reduction group has been functioning. Uh, we were able to actually, uh, Sietka was able to identify different categories of, uh, you know, the harm reduction argument being presented in the public forum, in media, you know, to governments, to civil society, in social media, etc. So there are, you know, a whole range of, you know, new groups that have come up, as I've mentioned, and then also, you know, identifying government officials who will become their champions. Of course, the end users are the ones, you know, who are talking about, you know, their experience and how wonderful it has been that has helped them to quit, you know, smoking and now to embrace, uh, you know, e-cigarettes, so on and, and, and so forth. And of course, there are think tanks, uh, academics have all been mobilized. So this is really an important issue for us to pay attention to. I'm coming towards the uh, end of my presentation. It is therefore important for us to strengthen the implementation of Article 5.3, as many of you have already been uh, mentioning. And so for, for this, the Knowledge Hub has actually prepared um, a toolkit where you, know, you can find lots of information about how to go about implementing Article 5.3. And there are many, many documents uh, in, in this, uh, how to do the monitoring, how to, how to compile and also then how to assist your government in preparing codes of conduct and there is a template. So this template will now, uh, you know, will be shared with you all. Uh, you know, it is part of the reference materials that the CCT, you know, has put together. And so it's a 10 page uh, template that you can actually apply. So it is, it's ready made for you to take it and to, you know, to look at how you can apply it to your local situation to assist your government to apply it in your country. So I just want to talk a little bit about the development of, 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 this, of the template. You can do what uh, several governments have done and which is ideally article 5.3 is to be applied across the whole government you know so because fctc is to be implemented by the whole government so philippines was the first country uh, as, as far as i know in 2010 to have the civil service commission department of health joint memorandum circular uh, and it's the civil service commission that developed their uh, code of conduct now is applicable across and applies to all civil servants. Australia, you know, also followed suit uh, with a code of conduct uh, in 2019, which applies across uh, the, uh, the, the government officials as well. And so does Thailand. Uganda has got an excellent uh, law, which, which 5.3 is implemented as a law. So it's part of the Tobacco Control Act in 2015. There are other governments who are taking an incremental approach, which is you get your Ministry of Health to apply the code of conduct first, and then you expand it, you know, to the rest of the government. So uh, India, for example, has got a code, Lao PDR, you know, uh, and also Indonesia have got a code specifically for the uh, ministries of health. Uh, so the whole idea really 
is that you ban, uh, uh, along with the code, you have got to do other things like ban uh, CSR activities, uh, be, uh, apply more transparency and ensure that the government, uh, that the industry does not get any benefits. I would strongly encourage you all to uh, um, uh, take this course on uh, Article 5.3. It's an e-learning uh, course, which has you know, got about seven uh, modules that uh, it's uh, quite good for you to take this course. So please apply uh, to, to join this course. Uh, and with that, I'd like to thank you all very much. Please visit the GGTC website. Uh, for more information and also visit um, the uh, Knowledge Hub um, website uh, that, uh, that I flashed earlier. With, with that, I'll be happy to uh, take our questions later. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Mary, for such a comprehensive presentation and sharing all the resource material available at the Knowledge Hub.